places and I hear the voice of little children, that's, that's the voice of life. Amen. So we're delighted to have children with us and they don't worry about their little talk and squealing and it's gone. This is God's house and it's God's business. And Also, I want to welcome you here tonight if you're here for the very first time. Welcome to God's house. And we trust that you'll be back to see us. And we're glad to have all of our church folks with us. And if we can see what our congregation is beginning to grow, and we thank God for what he's doing for us. And uh, make sure that you make plans for this dedication on Thursday night, and Friday night, and Saturday night, and Sunday morning. We want you to be with us and help us to celebrate victory. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Well, I'm, I'm glad to, to be here tonight myself. I'm, I want to praise the Lord for the singing tonight. The music was well organized, sounded great. Amen. I've chosen to speak to you tonight about uh, something the Lord's laid on my heart a few days ago. And I always rejoice when the Lord gives me something to share with you. In St. John's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 24, 25, 26, and 27. It gives you a picture of the midst of the Lord's Supper, the last one. He's preparing his church for his crucifixion and resurrection. But when they were all assembled together in one place, he, he said, to, and when he stood up before them, he said, there's 12 of them. And he said, one of you in this 12 will betray me. And they all looked at each other and said, who, who, who? Then Peter said to John, who was standing at the right hand of Jesus, King James says he's leaning on Jesus' breast. In other translations say he's standing by his right hand. He, and Peter said to him, John, you're the closest one to him. Ask him who it is that's going to betray us. So Jesus said, I dip this bread into, into juice. The one I gave it to will be the man. So he dipped it in and gave it to Judas Iscariot. That seemed to end everything. And, and, uh, but I didn't want to speak to you about the Lord's Supper. I want to speak to you about John. The, John the Revelator, who is standing at the right hand of the Lord Jesus, maybe laying on his breast, but nevertheless he is so close to him that John could hear and feel the heartbeat of our Lord. Remember now he's preparing them for his crucifixion. And he was doing it with joy that was set before him. And I believe what John heard when he heard and felt the heartbeat of the Lord, that every time that his heart beat was beating out a message to a lost world. When Jesus came especially to bring redemption to the lost. And that heartbeat was a heartbeat of redemption. As you know, redeem and redemption means the full purchase price of a slave. So Jesus, when he came to shed his blood, he did it with love and his heart was reaching out to a lost world. If you read the, chapbook, uh, the book of John, you will notice that he had a different approach to the message than the other three men. If you look at chapter 1, it said, In the beginning was a word with God, and the word was God. He linked the, be the, the beginning of the uh, crucifixion and the redemption plan is same as the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. 
So the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That exists also in John's Gospel, chapter 1. And that flesh become the Son of God, which is, was, is God's Word. So if you follow the writing of John, you will notice that he emphasized on many occasions salvation. And he was the one who wrote John 3.16 and 3.15 said as the serpent, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Then the famous, beautiful verse, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the message that John heard when he heard the heartbeat of our Lord. I have never literally heard his heartbeat. But through the Holy Spirit, I have felt that heartbeat. Even in the times of distress and hardships, I never forgot the heartbeat that Jesus was crying out to a lost world. That's what he's called us to do as well. With the message that he's given to us, it's not to be hidden in our life, but it's to be broadcast and to share it with those who do not know him. And then Jesus in his preparation for his crucifixion and resurrection, he said to them in John 14, In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would not have told you. And I go and prepare a place for you, that where I am, ye shall be also. And then I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's a message of hope. That's a message that takes us out of this world and gives us a, a vision of heaven. Amen. I've thought a lot about heaven in the last few years. I cannot explain to you what heaven is like because we have not been given a clear description of it. But I do know this, it will be a land of peace. It will be a land of no more sorrows. It will be a land of no more heartaches. No more goodbyes. And no sickness and pain and frustrations in life. I do know that. That's the scripture fulfillment. And I do know that the, the streams will be clear as crystal. And the pavement of the new city will be gold. It will be decorated with diamonds and, and precious stones of all kinds. I don't believe the mind of a human being can visualize the beauty and the greatness of heaven. I do know this, that he's laid it out to us as a prize, as a gift. Only I must call upon the name of the Lord and accept Jesus Christ as his only begotten Son as my Savior. It doesn't take a whole lot to reach that goal. If you are in sin tonight and away from God, all you need to do is ask the Lord to forgive you and call upon that lovely name, the name of Jesus, and he will come. He will come to you, and he will open the door where you can come in and find peace and find comfort and find rest. John, on that day when he, leaning on the breast of Jesus, heard his heartbeat 
and he felt the compassion and the mercy of God, which I feel tonight. When the presence of the Lord comes, he brings with him peace, and he brings with him compassion, and he brings with him mercy. Whatever battle you're fighting tonight, you don't have to fight that battle by yourself because that's his business to help you in a time of hardships, in a time of battles, in a time of maybe some doubts and frustrations. Because we are human and doubts can creep in upon us and we wonder where's God what happened to him? God's never left you. He's here tonight to minister to your need. And I believe that there's some people here tonight that needs to call upon that name, the name of Jesus. So would you just unanimously call upon him? Let's call his name Jesus. Uh, come on, Jesus, Jesus, Woo! Jesus, have mercy, Lord. Cover our lives with your presence. Woo! Let's praise him, lift your hands with me, and let's praise the Lord together. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and for your forgiveness. And when your hand is outstretched, I pray especially, Lord, for those that are here tonight that needs a special touch of the Master's hand. May we drift it off and lost in faith and having struggles. In Jesus' name, restore them, Lord, by your power and by your mercy. Let this be a night, Lord, that they won't ever forget at night when you came and gave them a new vision, a new touch, and a new value. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's give him a praise and clap our hands together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Woo! I can't ever can't tell you when the word felt so good. Amen. Do you feel good? Amen. You feel like the Lord has done something for you? Praise him for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Defeat the devil through the, through the worship of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Now we have a little box. We're going to pray for people in this box. Amen. Uh, okay. We have a, a friend that's in, the, that's in the nursing home, and he's, it looks like he's in his near. And he's a man of God, and he loves the Lord, and his wife. And just join me as we pray for people in this box that we pray for Don Smith. Lord, we thank you for the privilege you've given to us to pray. We pray for Brother Don Smith and his wife Ruby tonight, Lord, who he is going through the struggles of life and death. I pray in the name of Jesus. If it's your time to take him home, take him home peacefully. If not, give him a special touch of a master's hand. And bless Ruby tonight, Lord, and lift her by your spirit. And we pray for the people in this box, their names in this box. Amen. We pray for them in the name of Jesus. We hold them up to you, Lord. You know where they live. You know what the problems are. Answer prayer, Lord, and touch them, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, it's